What is going on? This is Cody, and you are tuned in to B-Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios here at Children's Hospital Colorado. And boy, do we have a special treat for you today. Maya, it's another special edition of your show. And who is on the line with us today? Brooklyn Decker. Brooklyn Decker, welcome. Thank you. The crowd went crazy. Did you hear that? I really appreciate the applause. Thank you. I will yeah. always take a pre-recorded applause. Thank you so much. I mean, Maya. it was actually legit real. There's like thousands of people right here. I can imagine all masks <laughs> responsible. I, I just appreciate the thundering applause from the internet ether out there. That's right. That's right. Well, Maya, take it away, girl. Uh, so first of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much for calling in. I have been so excited to talk with you. Thank you, Maya. I'm so happy to be here. And I have to know, I know you're trying to get in 300 interviews. What number is this? Do you know? 262. Look at us. Look at you. Well done. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, so my first question for you is, um, so what, uh, for you was the biggest challenge about modeling? Ooh, um, you know, the challenge with modeling, I mean, it's a fantastic job. And I was someone, I grew up in North Carolina. Um, I had never traveled. I had never been on an airplane. I didn't have a passport. And so it opened the world up in so many incredible ways. Um, the hard part though, is I think that most of us grow up thinking that if we work really hard at something, if we, you know, work really hard, if we study, if we treat people kindly, that we will be successful and whatever we try to do, you know, whether we try to be the best nurse in the world, whether we try to be the best teacher, whatever it is, you work hard enough um, and you study hard enough, you can get there. Or at least that's how I was raised. And with modeling, it's just not true. No matter how much you want it, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you work, no matter how you treat people, it doesn't matter. So much of it's based on luck. And when you're wanting to be someone who works, uh, that can be really difficult. So I think for me, that was the hardest part is that hard work does not equate to success. Um, but you know, I also, I, I, I don't like to, uh, to throw away opportunities and not sound completely grateful for everything that it afforded me. Yeah. Um, so what is, was it a natural transition into acting? Thank you for that question. Um, you know, it's funny. I grew up doing a lot of theater, community theater, school plays. And so that was something, you know, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a respiratory therapist. And so in my mind, you don't become a model or an actor or a musician. Like I didn't know anyone in the arts. And so that wasn't a viable career option. And so I loved acting growing up. I loved doing local theater, but I didn't think I could actually do it. And when I was modeling, honestly, Maya, I really missed talking. I missed having conversations. I missed um, getting to know people. And so I started taking acting lessons from an acting teacher simply because I wanted to read. I wanted to study. I wanted to have interesting conversations. Um, and so it started not even as a career transition, but just as something to uh, help me get through modeling and to help me scratch an itch that I had. Uh, and then once I started and I got a few projects back to back, it felt like, I don't want to say the most natural thing in the world because it takes a lot of work, but it felt right. Cool. Um, so uh, you've guest starred in some of my favorite shows. Um, including uh, the shows Chuck, Royal Pains, and New Girl. Um, was it fun being a part of these uh, wonderful ensemble casts? It was. And I hear that you have had Max Greenfield and Zachary Levi and many other actors from these shows on this very show. So I feel honored to be on the show and to follow in their footsteps with you today. Um, yes, it's so much fun. It's it's the best way to 
uh, learn how to act. And because you're working with other people on shows that you love, I was such a fan of new girl. And so to be on that set, to see how it gets made behind the scenes was such a gift. Um, cause you feel like you're there working and you're enjoying the people that you love, but also you're there as a fan. Uh, and I feel like you can, I, you and I can both connect there on how, you know, you are doing this all the time you're working, you're interviewing, you know, you have a protocol that you adhere to, but you're still a fan. And I can imagine we have a similar feeling. That's how I felt being on some of these shows was, um, I was there to work and I was prepared to do it, but I was also just so happy to be a part of this thing that I loved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, you also, uh, play Mallory Hansen on Grace and Frankie. Um, and I also love that show. Um, uh, what is the best part of working with legends like Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin? Well, you get to do what you love and also learn from the best. You know, I imagine it's what it was like for you. And I don't want to, you know, put words in your mouth or assume that I know your experience, but I imagine like when you were working with Ryan Seacrest and you're working out of the studio in the hospital, you know, that you're, you're there working and doing what you love and you get to be a part of someone else's world who you admire. It is so cool. It's the best way to learn. Um, I just loved it. And the two of them, you know, Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda have, Oh my goodness. They've lived through so many, so many different phases of the film and television industry. They've lived through so many phases in history. They have so many incredible stories. So just listening and absorbing all of their knowledge and everything they had to share so generously was truly the gift of a lifetime. It was so much fun to call Jane Fonda mom. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I love their, um, Netflix special. Yes. That, um I when it first came out, I watched it with um my sister and we were just like cracking up. And then um I rewatched it multiple times. So <laughs> I love that. That was that was so cool. So you clearly are a fan of comedy like I am. Yes. You you have to. I mean, especially these days, laughing is the best medicine. You know, it, it yeah. makes us all happy. It makes us all better. I loved that special because it was all these awesome women coming together and sharing really funny stories. So again, I got to be there for work, but I was able to be a fan of all these incredible comedians. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, um, it was kind of funny before we watched that. Um, special we watched uh, another comedy special that was mainly all uh, male comedians and so once we watched uh, then Jane and Lily's special we were like this is a very nice break from like all the testosterone <laughs> You, you really covered it all. You got all, you got the male side, you got the female side. I bet that's actually yeah. a really funny practice to watch one special and then the other because yeah. we're always talking about each other, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So afterwards, yeah, we were like, this is very nice to have um, just an all female uh, cast. And I agree. I'm so happy you watched it. I totally agree. It was just, it was, I mean, I also, Maya backstage. So before we went on stage, you had all these comedians and everyone's getting like their hair and makeup done. Everyone's getting dressed. They're practicing their monologues or their bits or their lines. And one of the, the first comedian who opened, I can't remember her name. She's from Georgia. Her heel broke. And we were all like, what size are you? Do you need to borrow a pair of shoes? Like everyone went into like clean up mode to help each other, which is having all these women come together to help each other out. It was so chaotic and so funny. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, this is why I love working with women because someone breaks a, a heel and there are three women in line ready to hand over her shoes. You know, it was, yeah. it was very cool. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, so is there any part of Mallory that you relate to? Yes. So when I started shooting Grace and Frankie, it was eight years ago. Oh uh, yeah. Eight years ago. 
um, I didn't have any kids. And so I was playing this mom who's really struggling with her identity as a mother. And in many ways I can connect to that, just being a woman in the world. But then once I had kids, I really understood the desire to keep it all together, you know, to manage everything, to stay on top, to stay in control. Um, and so once I had children in real life, I was really able to connect to, uh, the desire that a mother has to keep her family together. Um, and so, yes, I found that as she grew up in the series, I grew up outside of the series and I was able to connect to her more. That being said, Mallory is a very neurotic, high strung, um, uh, perfectionist of a person. And I am not, I, I am very relaxed. I'm not, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I'm definitely a type B personality, not a type A personality like Mallory. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a peacekeeper. Um, so we're, we're very different in many ways, but as I got older, I was able to connect to her even more. Oh, cool. Uh, what was your favorite episode to film? Ooh, Oh, that's such a hard question. There's so many fun episodes. You know, one that really stands out to me was in the first season. It might've been in the second season, but it was a flashback episode. Um, and my character was pregnant in the episode and gave birth in the episode. And I delivered a baby in the episode. I, I, in real life had not had children yet. And so I have this whole labor scene and Martin Sheen, who played my father is there holding my arm as I'm grunting and having a baby on camera. And the funniest thing was that story. So my character, Mallory has a baby inside of her sweatpants. She's in this living room with her whole family present and she goes into labor and she has the baby in her sweatpants. And it seems like such a, an outlandish story, but the reality is it was based on our costume designer, Allison Fanger, who was telling the story about how she had her third baby and she had her baby in her sweatpants in her driveway outside in the middle of the winter. And she's telling the writers this story. And it's so unbelievable and funny that they wrote it for my character. And so I got to play Allison's story on screen while she's back there helping me pretend I'm in labor about to have a baby inside my sweatpants. So it was one of those, it was one of those art imitating life episodes that was not only really fun to do, but because it was still early in the series, it was a funny thing for all of us, all these grown adults to be together, delivering a baby together. So that to me is one that really stands out as one of the weirdest and most special episodes. Wow. Yeah, I actually, I, I remember that episode. <laughs> it was a lot, I think it was like early, like season one or two was early on in the series. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, but that, I never knew that that was based on like a, a real story. That's um, really, that's really amazing. <laughs> It is. It was, it's a wild story. And the funny thing is when, if I remember correctly, when that season came out, I feel like there were a few either like online commentators or critics or, or whoever it was talking about how outlandish and unrealistic that storyline was. And meanwhile, we all knew that it was absolutely based on someone's real life delivery experience. So it made it so much more fun to know that it was so crazy that it had to be real. You know, those stories that are sometimes so wild, they just have to be real because you couldn't have made it up. It was one of those yeah. stories. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so do you have any upcoming projects? So during COVID, there's a big, that's a big maybe is the answer to that. During COVID, um, I started writing for the first time. Now, do you write? Because you're, you're a journalist. You write. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love writing and making up stories. What kind of, do you write, do you like writing scripts? Do you like writing narrative, like novels, short stories? What kind of thing do you like to write? I like short stories. Um, yeah, I, I took a creative writing class senior year of high school. And so I just kind of kept going. Good for you. They say you should write every day for happiness. That's what they say. They tell us we should write every day. And um, yeah, I started writing during COVID and I created a, a series with um, 
another writer named Asha and June, who plays my sister on Grace and Frankie. The three of us did it together and we are pitching it now. So you, maybe you'll see it in a few years and maybe it'll fail and no one will ever see it. That's the nature of the business and who knows, but that's what's happening right now is I'm trying, you know, I was talking about that control with Mallory. Um, I'm trying to have a little control over what I do because as an actor, you're always hired by someone else, it's kind of the, the idea of doing something yourself is really fun. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, so is there a show that you're currently obsessed with? Ooh, let's see. We just finished watching Inventing Anna on Netflix, and I am very late to the game, but we just started Stranger Things. Do you watch Stranger Things? I don't. A little scary? I, no, I didn't think, I think when it first came out, I watched the first episode and it's not that, I don't think I was like really scared by it. I thought it was creepy. Yeah. Um, but then I think I was just also a little bit confused by it. And so I just decided I didn't want to watch something that um, confused me. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. It is, it is confusing. We're still figuring it out. We're still in the first season. But because so many people love this season, the, I think it's the fourth season that just came out. I feel like I have to stick with it because so many people love it more over time. But hey, listen, I'll watch it. If I think it's worth watching, I'll report back to you. And then you okay. can deeper. I'll just let you know. What are you okay, watching right thank now? You. What should I be watching right now that you love? Um, oh, well, right now I'm watching uh, it. Not the, well, there's one show that we're binge watching right now. We just started a new Netflix show called Boo. There's a there's another word in the title, but I can't say it. <laughs> so, um, but uh, we've watched like the, we've just watched the first episode so far, but we like it right now, uh, or we like it so far. And then I don't know. We're watching like a bunch of the shows we're watching are just coming out once a week. So we, even if we want to binge watch them, we can't. Like um, season two of Only Murders in the Building. Yes, I love that show. So, so the creator of Only Murders in the Building was one of the executive producers and writers on Grace and Frankie, and he left to go lovingly left to go make this show called only murders in the building. And we were like, good luck, John, best of luck to you, buddy. It's going to be great. And now it's like one of the most successful, successful shows out right now. Yes. So I read for that show so hard. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, and right now I'm also watching, uh, older, their older shows, but I'm watching castle and night court. Yep. Good. Um, watching both of those so and do you you mentioned your sister do you watch most of your shows with your sister um there are well there are um a lot of them that like I watch with my sister and our mom but then there are some that like when because they'll like sometimes go out and do things and when I don't feel good I can't do anything really so um, I just, so, so I found things to watch while, yes, when I'm not feeling good. Do you yeah. have any rules around binging? Like if you, st are there certain shows that you can only watch with your family that they'll only allow you to watch with them because they don't want you to get too far ahead? Are you kind of okay yes. with experiencing all the shows at your own? Um, well, there are some that, uh, we all watch together because we all want to see it yeah. and um so and like with castle my mom watched when it was on and um 
uh, uh, but she doesn't remember all of the seasons. So I w- so sometimes I'm just like, do you want me to wait for wait for you? And it's not very sincere. Um, right, right. <laughs> I just want to keep watching it. But she's like, no, it's fine. I'll watch when. <laughs> she's got to have some memory in there of it, right? Yeah. Move along without her. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, uh, usually when we watch an episode together, as we're watching it, she's usually like, oh, I remember this part. Like, I remember. Yes. <laughs> I need to episode. start it. I haven't started Castle. That's a good recommendation. Oh, yeah, I, um, yeah, like I said, my mom loved that show when it was on and I, I love it now. <laughs> Great. That's a win. I hope yeah. my kids can watch TV with me one day. <laughs> um, so what song would you choose to wake up to every day? Oh, Maya, that's so tough because I just love music so much. Um, who? So lately I've been on a Bruce Springsteen kick which I didn't grow up listening to Bruce Springsteen. So it's kind of a new discovery for me. I'm about 30 years late, but um, I've been on a big Bruce Springsteen kick. It also feels like summery music. So it's like, it feels seasonal. I'm also very excited about Beyonce's new album that's coming out on, I think it's July 27th. So I'm counting down the days, listening to a lot of Beyonce. Um, Right now, I love Taylor Swift just released a song called Carolina that goes with the movie where the crawdads sing. And I am currently uh, with you from North Carolina. So it feels like home that song. So that's like a good calm wake up song, but there's so many, I could talk about music for hours. What about you? What's your wake up song? Oh, I could talk about music for hours too. Um, Right now I've been, um, I think the main soundtrack um, I've had on repeat has been to a Disney Plus movie called Sneakerella. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I love that movie. And so I've been listening to the soundtrack just kind of on repeat. But then I have um, other... um, artists that I've been listening to also like I love there's a song called Witch by um her name is Devin Cole Mm. and I love that song okay I'm gonna download it after we talk here because I haven't heard it I don't think oh it's so good it's um like it's I now I'm blanking on the word but it's not like actual it it's called witch, but um, it stands for, um, she says in the song, woman in total control of herself. Oh, and so. love that. That's what yeah. we were talking about yeah. earlier. Like the desire to kind of yeah. control things a little bit as females. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm yeah. going to listen to that when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and um, I uh, love Bruce Springsteen. He is actually one of my favorite singers because my mom is a huge fan of his. And so my sister and I um, like grew up on his music and all the 80s music. So we are, so we love that whole like era of music. Maya, you have good taste. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I am. Yeah, he, he's new to me. I I mean, not new to me, but I have just really taken a deep dive. And it's, I mean, I, he's incredible. It's it's fun to do that, to think of an artist that you've known of forever, but you really don't know their library and to kind of go deep. It's It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so is there a personality trait you have that has gotten you in uh, in the most trouble? Ooh, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. I, I 
was just talking about how easygoing I was when I was talking about Mallory, but I am very opinionated and very um, honest. And so my friends will call me first if they're in a really tough situation and they need someone to shoot them straight. You know, if they need a friend to just speak the truth and to not sugarcoat things, they call me because I'm really, by the way, Maya, can you, I don't know if you can hear anything, but my cat, there's, I'm sitting next to curtains and my cat's right here. Yeah. Sorry. I heard her ruffling these curtains and I'm like, where is she? She's in the curtains. Um, So I can be, Oh, I just turned off the light. I can be too, there we go. I can be too um, honest, I think. And it's only when I'm asked to be, you know, that open, but it can be a little blunt. And I think that I could probably do better at softening my delivery to my friends and family. How about you? Oh, um, uh, well, my uh, sister, I, uh, we have a lot of, traits from my mom that uh, she has always talked about that like her um stubbornness and um like have really having no filter um has gotten her in trouble and it's the same for both me and my sister we a lot of like if somebody tells us to do something that we were already about to do we don't want to do it since they Uh told us Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um and again um maybe saying things that like that pop into our head that then we realize we probably shouldn't have said that out loud that's fair. That's fair. So, that, that's difficult. I can see that getting you into some trouble. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what? I feel like as I have a daughter and she's only four, but I feel like a mother of daughters, and I don't want to speak for your mom, wants her girls to be that way. I'm sure it's very hard to parent. And I'm sure you yes. say things that cut right, right through her, but I feel like <laughs> you want your girls to be stubborn and strong. You know, it's going to serve you so well in life. It's going to serve you so well. And my mother-in-law actually gave great advice. She said, you can't put it in them. So don't try to take it out of them. Like you can't put stubbornness in your kids. You can't create that drive and that passion and that, that, um, candor, you know, that you and your sister have. So don't try to take it out of them. So I think that's a good thing. That's going to be your strength, your superpower. Yeah. We always, um, we always laugh about it, but then say we think it, that it's a good thing. Yeah, it is. It is so, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Except for there have been many times, like when we were in high school, that there have been um, times where, like, one of my teachers will tell me I need to do something, and I still always do. I would always do it, but as soon as they would tell me I needed to do it, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> like reverse psychology, they just need to tell you, "No, oh, Maya, you don't have to do it. It's okay. Yeah. Take your time, and then you're going to be driven to actually complete the task." I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It needs to be your idea. I get that. I get that. Thank totally. you. Yeah, I get it. Um, so my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Oh, um, I think in this conversation, I think you're a superhero because you are showing so many children who are confined to four walls right now, the possibilities of what they can do. And I think that you're giving people hope you're giving kids younger than you hope kids older than you hope adult children like myself hope. Um, I, I think you're a superhero. Um, my, I think my parents are superheroes or healthcare providers, my brother is a real life superhero because he's a firefighter. Here I am just making TV shows and movies. And my family's actually like saving lives and putting out fires and really doing the hard work to help other human beings. So I think anyone who um, puts their own um, 
difficulties or challenges aside to help others, which is what you're doing, um, is a superhero. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And, um, and I, um, yeah, my, uh, mom and my sister are my best friends and my superheroes. So it's fun to have superheroes living under your roof, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, Can I ask you a quick question, Maya? Because oh, I was yes. thinking about this before. Do you get nervous or have you gotten over it when you go on to these recordings? <laughs> oh, um, oh, well, thank you. There have been, I, when I first started, I would get nervous and not really know what to say. And now when, like, I tell my mom, I, uh, like when I go down and tell her I was starstruck by you, um, my she's always like she uh, always says, "Yeah, but your starstruck is like for a minute. You don't have any words, and then just go right into the interview." <laughs> you're so comfortable in your skin, and you're 18, right? Thank you, 19. 19. I mean, to be that self-assured and confident at such a young age is a really cool thing to see because I get nervous before every recording like this or anytime, really anytime, like a podcast, an audio recording, a video recording. And so I thought, how is this person who is a teenager doing this with so many awesome people? I think that's very cool. Very well, cool. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This has been such a pleasure. Cody, thank you so much for having me. This has been a treat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank if you ever you find so yourself much. here in, in Colorado in person, we'd love to see you. I know the kids would love to meet you. You yeah. always have an invitation. That's so kind. I really appreciate that. Let's discuss because I, I, I can see myself happily trotting up there to visit you all. That'd be I great. mean, right? There's beautiful mountains. There's you might as that. well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Listen. Now, I, I feel like coming out of the last couple of years, you just got to say yes when the opportunity comes, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You say yes. Maya, you're a rock star. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you. Pop star. Not a rock star. A pop star. <laughs> I should be correct. Extraordinary. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for this time. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thank I know you. Maya will keep us updated on where to find you next. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.